Um, a couple of things to start off with. So again, when we have a rabbit, we're concerned about it being sick. The few things that I want you guys to kind of, you know, step one, step two, what you're doing at home. First thing I want you to do is take a temperature. It's always nice, you have your, your thermometer, but it's always nice to have some lubrication too. It's good to have a water-based lubrication. Okay. So um, this is non-spermicidal sterile lubricating jelly. But you can get like KY's in the store. So, okay, so what I do, I put one hand underneath the front, I take my other hand and kind of scoop up his butt, okay? So I'm supporting my uh, little rear end here with the lower hand and then up here so that he's not, you know, trying to jump away from me. It's always at best to have somebody to do stuff with you if you can. I'm going to demonstrate how to do things alone if you are by yourself. So what you can do is you, if you're by yourself, you can kind of have your table and you can kind of use your table as your support for your rump. Again, when I'm looking for our temperature, where we're going to take our temperature, we have our little area here. We have our two holes. We have, since he's Fonzie's a boy, there's the penis on top and the little rectum on the bottom. Take your lubrication and you like to put a little glob kind of right over the rectal opening. It's a little nice. And then you're going to insert right into the rectum. And you can kind of push it in a bit so it is actually in kind of deep. Okay? And you can see he doesn't really care. I don't temp him all the time. So, <laughs> and this is the first time he's been a demo bunny. And you can see he's doing okay and he really didn't mind. If I put it in the wrong spot, he would mind. So, again, make sure that you're looking where you're giving. So, his temperature was nice and normal at 102.5. So, if we check her temperature, temperature was good. Then the next thing that we want to go on to, if we have an emergency situation in our hands and we're not sure if our bunny is bloated, we check. There's a couple ways that I can do it. Um, if I have somebody holding again, it's nice. But what I'm doing, I run my hands along the side here, and I can feel his ribs. So I go to the end of those ribs, and then I kind of tuck in just behind the end of those ribs. And I'm going to kind of just gently, you can see I'm not really you know, pushing very hard, but I'm just kind of gently compressing in with my fingers, and I can feel some resistance in him. And like I said, when we go into rooms individually, you guys can either feel him or feel your own buddies. But right now with him, I can feel a nice soft stomach that is full of food, but it's not horribly distended or dilated or anything like that. This is a nice normal stomach that I want to feel on a rabbit. Um, if I were to feel him, if I came down here, I got to the edge of those ribs and I kind of tried to tuck him beneath and oh my gosh, there's this big thing that I can't push against that's a, that feels literally like a, a balloon or a bubble or a basketball back there, that's a big bloated stomach. If I could really push in and almost touch my fingers, that's a stomach that's empty. That's a, that's a good rabbit to syringe feed. So. Um, okay, so now if you're at home and you have to do some sort of nursing care with your rabbit, um, the syringe feeding or giving medications, again, I'll do a little demonstration without anything in the syringe here. Um, I often like to hold them, if they're going to be okay and I don't need to put them in a burrito, but I'll show you in a burrito too. Um, I always hold them so the head is away from me and the butt is towards me. And the reason being is because a lot of rabbits like to kind of back up. And so if my chest is right here, they can only back up into me. And it's much easier too, rather if his, if his head is in front of me and I'm trying to smash something into his face, he's going to be like, oh my god, what are you doing? I'm, I'm leaving. So here, I'm kind of effectively restraining him where his butt is against my chest, I've got my arms on either side, and he's kind of kept in, in a supported location. I can then kind of bring my hand around gently to kind of stabilize his head. Um, I'm not squishing or, you know, being at firm at all with him. I'm just kind of gently stabilizing it. And then again, when I bring a syringe up, I'm basically bringing that syringe up not in front, not coming like this because that's going to make him upset like he's getting right now. Instead, I bring it to the side. And a lot of them will just kind of then start to take it. <laughs> so. so, for a demonstration of bunny burrito, we have him on the center of our towel. We can do our little butt tuck and then side tuck. <clears throat> Either side. So Bunny is so much better behaved than mine. <laughs> so and that's our little bunny burrito. And it's really nice, it's really effective at making it so that they, you know, they can still jump and still try to get away from you like this. I mean there's definitely rabbits who have 
strong wills and really don't want things and really try to get away, but it's easier to deal with them in this position and it's less potential risk for some sort of trauma because sometimes rabbits just work so hard to get away from getting their medications that they could potentially hurt themselves. And so having them in something like this, if you do have a bunny like that, is going to be a little bit safer for them. Safer for them, safer for you too because they can scratch. And you know, the other thing that I wanted to demonstrate with you guys was just how to do an injection if you had to. So again, I'll kind of do this from the side because it's a little easier to see and I'll even turn him around too. But we're going for between the shoulder blades. You'll notice this is also the location that you're going for to check their hydration. So when I pull his skin up, I let go, see how quickly it snaps back? That's normal. That's a well hydrated bunny. If I pulled up and it went like this, that would be slow. That would be a rabbit that's dehydrated. If I held up and it just stayed up, that's an extremely dehydrated rabbit. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you will have a rabbit who's elderly. If they're elderly, sometimes they don't snap back into place so much. But a um, you know, middle-aged rabbit, young rabbit, this should snap back into place fine. But so if we're giving our injection, we are pulling up the skin in that location. And essentially it's making a little triangle, a little tent. I'm gonna bring my syringe up to right at the bottom of that tent, okay? Kind of right at the base. You don't wanna go up here because you'll end up poking through and hitting yourself. So really when you're going at that base, you're gonna be the most successful. And so again, let's pretend like there was something actually in here. We're gonna go into that base and I'm gonna pull back first and look in my kind of syringe area to make sure that there's no blood, there's no air. If there is, I would redirect into a different location. But if it was and I was fine, then I'm okay to go ahead and do my injection. You can kind of go on the sides here. There is extra loose skin here um, that is okay. Now, we always, you know, this is the nice kind of go-to area. If you have a rabbit that is having a lot of injections for whatever reason or is on some chronic medication, like say you have a rabbit that has kidney failure and has to be on subcutaneous fluids and you have to give them fluids very frequently, you may not necessarily always want to go in that spot. Because if you do have to give too many injections, well, that's a needle that's going in multiple times, you are eventually going to get to a point where it can be potentially irritating to the skin. Sometimes we've seen things like abscesses at injection sites, that sort of thing. So going to different locations is, is okay.